Hi, this video is about incomplete dominance and co-dominance. So let's start off with a, a traditional Punnett square problem. So picture here we have two flowers that we're going to mate. Uh, the red flower is homozygous dominant, while the white flower is homozygous recessive. So create a Punnett square to show the cross between two flowers. And then what's the color of the heterozygote? Uh, so you can pause the video and solve this problem and then unpause it when you have a solution. So um, here's our uh, cross. Uh, we set up our key as normal. So big R is red and little r is white. And our parent genotypes are homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive. And if we fill in our Punnett square, we'll see that 100% will be heterozygous. And we assume here um, that our heterozygotes are, of course, going to be red because red is dominant over white. So we expect to see 100% heterozygotes, which are going to be red. So let's see what actually happens with this species of flower. Oh, there we go. You see something bizarre here. Um, you notice the pink offspring. Um, and the pink offspring are the heterozygotes. Um, and of course, you know, our white and red flowers are homozygous, one being homozygous dominant, the other homozygous recessive. So what's the explanation for this observation? This brings us to a concept or a mode of inheritance called incomplete dominance. Um, and basically, the definition is that heterozygotes display an intermediate phenotype. Um, intermediate, well, intermediate between the red and white. The intermediate between red and white is pink. Uh, another way to think about it is the heterozygotes sort of display, you know, a blending of the traits. You know, it's like if you were to mix red and white, you get pink. Um, now, that's the intuition, but I'll be careful because that's not what's really happening. The alleles are separate. They're not mixing. Um, and so maybe that's the way you remember it, but... You know, the, you should understand that it's an intermediate phenotype. Uh, so that brings us to the question, how do we represent um, this genotype? Um, and so traditionally, uh, we would say that, you know, we have big R, little r. Um, but we, we want to figure out a different way of writing it because if we have big R, little r, that might sort of confuse us into thinking that red is dominant over over white. And of course, what we see in this case is that it, it's incompletely dominant over white. So it's dominant over white, but not completely. Um, and that so that's the sort of intuition that I have. Anyhow, back to the genotype uh, case. Um, so, you know, typically you might write the, the red flower um, as um, R1, R1, to show that that it has the first version of this sort of uh, allele. Um, and in that case, the white flower would be R2, R2, because it has two copies of the second version, which is the white. And then the pink flower might be R1, R2, um, to show that it has one copy of each uh, of the red and the white. I don't know. I don't really like that way, but some problems you'll see um, the genotypes written that way. Another way might be, you know, big R, big R, um, which is the normal way. And then the heterozygote would be big R, little r. And then, of course, the, other, the white flower would be little r, little r. You could go that way. Um, just You have to just be careful of not confusing the mode of inheritance with the regular dominant, uh, recessive dominant inheritance. Another way, um, you might write big R, big R for the red, or you might, and then the big W, big W for the white, White in the W would stand for white, of course. And the, the heterozygote, the pink flower, would be big R, big W. I think that's a sort of neat way uh, to do it. Um, so, you know, you have your preference. Just make sure you don't confuse this with normal dominant versus recessive relationship. Uh, so let's solve a problem. Um, so show the cross of two pink flowers. And then, of course, what are the possible offspring? So I would pause the video here. Um, and solve the problem, uh, and then unpause it when you're ready for the solution. 
So since this is incomplete dominance and we're we're crossing two pink flowers, I think you know ideally you start with your key. Um, so I'll, I'll keep the tradition away for in this example. So big R will be red, little R will be white, and then big R, big little R would be pink. Um, and this key I think is important with incomplete dominance to in your key to not just show the separate alleles, but to show the heterozygote because that's a good reminder to you that. Um, you know, that there's something weird happening with the heterozygote. So then, you know, our parent genotypes are heterozygous, so big R, big dub, excuse me, big R, little r. Um, and then, you know, we can set up our Punnett square, and, you know, that should be pretty straightforward. Um, so we'll see one offspring with big R, big R, two of them with big R, little r, and then one with little r, little r. And then, of course, we have to use our key to, to explain... Uh, the phenotypes. So we have our big R, big R is red, our heterozygote is pink, and our homozygous recessive are going to be white. And then we can, you know, put out the percentages. So 25% of them are going to be red, 50% of them are going to be pink, and 25% of them are going to be white. Um, an example of incomplete dominance in humans uh, is actually hair texture. So it turns out, you know, the two extremes are curly hair and straight hair. Um, and so, um, you know, the homozygous dominant would be curly, homozygous recessive would be straight, and then the heterozygous are going to actually have an intermediate between curly and straight, which of course is wavy. Um, so real life example in humans of incomplete dominance. Now this brings us to a, actually another mode of inheritance. Let's look at this flower here. Um, notice that this flower has red and white splotches. Um, so what's the, the explanation for this phenotype? So this is um, something called co-dominance uh, instead of incomplete dominance or normal dominance. Um, and in this case, in co-dominance, the heterozygotes display um, both phenotypes equally. Um, so in the first example, you saw the heterozygotes had an allele for red and white, but they displayed an intermediate phenotype between red and white, which was pink. In this case, we're saying that red and white are actually co or equally dominant. So you'll see red and white splotches, red and white polka dots, red and white um, petals, red and white stripes. But the idea is that the heterozygote is going to have red and white represented, not the intermediate. So how do we write the genotype of this offspring? Um, we definitely don't want to write it as big R, little r, because that's going to completely throw us off. That'll, that'll, that'll make us think that one of the alleles is dominant and one of rece recessive. But in this case, they're both equally dominant. Um, so one way, of course, just like in complete dominance, you might say a big R for red and big W for white, which is, that's my favorite method of writing the genotype. Um, so this flower would be big R, big W. Uh, another case is using the superscript method that we saw in the incomplete dominance, but in this case, well, the base letter will be C, or any other letter, and in this case I chose C for color, uh, and then superscript might be um, the R or the W. So the, the heterozygote might be uh, C, superscript, big R, C, superscript, big W. Uh, and that's the, a way of showing it. I'm showing this to you because you'll see this uh, in some examples, even though that's not my personal preference for writing out the, the genotypes. So let's do another problem. So we're going to say a completely red flower is crossed with this red-white pattern flower. So show the cross and the possible offspring. Uh, so why don't you pause the video, solve this problem, um, and then unpause it when you're ready to work through it together. So we set up our key. Um, I, you know, I'm using my preferred method for the key. So big R is red, big W is white, and then big R, big W, the heterozygote is red and white. Again, when there's something weird, when there's something going on with the heterozygote, don't just write the key with the two separate alleles also write out the heterozygote. Um, and the parent genotypes are going to be big R, big W, uh, and big R, big R. So we set up our Punnett square. This part is pretty straightforward. Um, and then so we'll see that half of, half of them are going to be big R, big R, which should be red. 
and then half of them are going to be big R, big W, which should have the red and white patterns. So in a nutshell, that is uh, incomplete dominance and codominance. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.